Hi, Cam followers. Welcome to another one of our lives. We just wanted to mention before we start, there has been a few issues with our internet tonight. So uh, just bear with us. We're, we're trying to stream through a very busy issues apologize in advance um tonight we are so lucky to be joined by the wonderful professor stuart carmichael who is an orthopedic surgeon and is just amazing he's uh, done lives with us before so you've probably um watched those um but tonight we're going to be talking about telemedicine which is um you know a really hot topic at the moment because that's what we're doing um we'll start the talk um as i always like to i'll just pass over to stuart just for um an introduction about himself if that's all right Yes, thanks very much. Um, again, very nice to be with you tonight and be able to talk. Um, I say, I think say my name is Professor Stuart Carmichael. Um, I've been an orthopedic surgeon for a long, long time, veterinary orthopedic surgeon. Um, and I guess if you have listened to this before, you, you'll know that the reason I get interested in arthritis is that for an orthopedic surgeon, arthritis used to be what happened next. That was kind of the failure. And then, then we realized that arthritis wasn't really being addressed by anyone. Yeah. Um, and it was like a free for all. And the more I looked at it, the the harder it, it became. And I've spent kind of almost kind of 40 years of my career. And I'd love to have all the answers, but I don't and no one else has. So uh, I think it's a fascinating subject. So kind of that's where we are. We're all kind of, we're all still learning. Yeah, definitely. Oh, I'm, I'm so lucky because I'm in this great position where I get to speak to you and learn, take all those 40 years of experience and try and get all of the information I can out of you while uh, you're here on these lives with us. So uh, thank you very much for joining us. Um, so tonight, I guess um, we should just start with the really basic, obvious question. What do we actually mean by telemedicine? Yeah, I mean, I think telemedicine, um, by definition, is, is kind of... Uh, it's replacing the face-to-face in-person consultation with a different media, either telephone or by video. And, and I guess, I, you know, what's happened in the past six months has changed all of our lives. But um, one of the things that has happened is because we haven't been able to do physical face-to-face healthcare, we've had to use the obvious things that we, we've had in our hands for years are mobile phones more and more to actually do our healthcare discussions with pet owners. So telemedicine really is a consultation done over the telephone or over uh, a video telephone link. Yeah. And, um, I think that we're going to go on to the positives because there's lots of good things that we can take from this. But I think it's important that we talk about the negative side of this, that um, it doesn't replace a vet consult. There's nothing better as uh, for us as vets to get our hands on that patient and really find out where they're painful. It, you know, listening to their heart, that basic things like that sometimes are just the most important things. Um, so I think it is really, really important that we don't think that this is the only option for the, you know, even though it's very convenient and there are some really good benefits, there are some fairly obvious negatives as well. Um, but for those patients who are seen regularly, it could be a big benefit. What sort of negatives do you find with the telemedicine? Yeah, I, I think that that's exactly right. I mean, I think basically for all of our careers, we've been practised at doing this face to face in person yeah. a consultation and that's interesting there are rules for that and everyone's used to the interaction there are lots of signals that people can make which controls that for for the the, the patient the pet owner and the the vet yeah. and these rules don't apply when we do telemedicine because we are in a different world but the biggest drawback is exactly as you said um, we can't actually get our hands onto the patient. And mm -hmm. so a lot of the things we've got to do is we, we've got to kind of work in a slightly or in really a very different way by listening more, 
and, and using the time because the other thing, uh, disadvantage is time. Yeah. It's easy to run up a hugely lengthy discussion and achieve nothing. Yeah. Um, so th there's got to be a completely different control goes on with this for everyone to get the best of it. Because I mean, what we're trying to do in many ways, the, the, the best thing, uh, a tele medicine, a remote consult is used for is to see if there's something really wrong that needs yeah. direct attention. I mean, it's like a yeah. triage thing. That's, that's kind of one of the primary things. But as we learn a little bit more and how to use this, I, I think we're feeling that there are some things that we can do pretty well using this media. And it can solve some of the problems that we, you know, we, that we had with the direct consultation. So, you know, COVID's been interesting because we've had to develop this and everyone's had to learn. But as we come out of COVID, there may be some things, some gems that we've picked up that we can carry on and make life a lot easier for everyone, especially in the arthritis field. Yeah, definitely. I think you're absolutely right. And the only other thing that I'd mention as a slight negative is when I'm when I'm taking history normally, so I'm asking the, the client all the questions about what's going on with their pet, you also tend to watch the dog. And sometimes that is when they do something very subtle but can be really important. And you don't you don't get that with telemedicine. So they, that's another little negative that I um, that just popped into my head. Um, but yeah, let's click on and talk about the, the positives then, because um, there are some really good positives. Um, yeah. do you, I'll let you start talking about it before I gabble on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I think, and I think you're absolutely right. And I think, I think what I've got for you tonight is a nice system that's thought through. Yeah which works for a lameness consults using a, a video medium, because that's what we're really talking about. Um, and what you just mentioned there is really interesting because it's the unconscious things, you know, the things that we do unconsciously, which, that, and these are the things that are missing because yeah. we're just face to face on the screen and we're at the mercy of what that camera is pointing at. Yeah. And there's, there, that's another, um, kind of downside before we go into the good side yeah people sometimes forget that their phone's on and you might see some things that you don't want to see <laughs> on the the camera so you know people have got to think very carefully yeah yeah on, on both sides yeah yeah on both sides yeah <laughs> so so i mean if you think about the po <laughs> if we think about the positives i mean one of the things and and we and I, i'm sure people have had experience with this you know so i i've been involved in orthopedics all my career and i started off with horses and the one thing you've got to do with horses is you've got to do a lameness examination and you've got to learn that and it's not an easy thing to do mm. and and dogs are difficult and i think sometimes dogs are more difficult than horses and cats are, are even more difficult again yeah. um so so we start off with a difficult thing in, in trying to determine something that's really important because the lameness gives us so much information about what's happening in terms of what the the uh, the pet can feel, you know, because mm -hmm. the lameness is, is related to pain yeah. and, and kind of, and, and, and the first thing I'll say is that I think often people overcomplicate lameness. It's really interesting. Lameness is just about, is it lame? Is it not lame? Is it a front leg? Is it a back leg? Is it a right leg? Is it a left leg? If you can answer these three questions, you've got most of the information you need. Mm -hmm. People go on about these special things and you'll know, do this and do that. And I think, you know what? A lot of that is just flabber. You know, <laughs> it, it, you've got to kind of concentrate and keep it simple. Mm -hmm. So. And then keeping it simple is important because I think it's difficult to do a lameness examination, even in a clinic. Yeah. And people, the number of times I've spent uh, looking at animals who m miraculously recover uh -huh. mm -hmm. as soon as they come into the clinic. Yeah. You know, it's like going to the dentist with a toothache. As soon as you get there, there's no toothache. And a lot of these dogs come in. And that's really because yeah. 
they're in a different environment, they're excited, they're seeing lots of different things. And the last thing they will show you is the thing that the owner is really concerned about. Yeah. And then what happens next is you go outside and you walk up and down and you walk up and down and you walk up and down trying to see this. And and, and even if the lameness is there, it takes a while mm -hmm. for your brain just to click and say, right, I've got it. I understand exactly what it is. And and again, it's really important to do this. A lot of a lot of practices don't do it because it's hard. Yeah. And 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 my other experience is being a living most of my professional life in Scotland. You know, doing lameness examinations in the rain is not much fun. <laughs> yeah. You know, we, everyone's getting soaked. Yeah, it's not much fun. Um, but the 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 kind of thing, the, the key thing in a lameness examination is knowing what's happening with the body weight and knowing that the body weight goes down when the leg is sound. So the body weight goes onto that leg and the lame leg, if it's not been held up, the, the animal holds its weight off that mm -hmm. leg. And that's what we're looking for in the lameness examination. And a lot of owners, when they, when they look at a dog, they think when they see the weight going right down onto one leg, that that's the lame leg. That's not the lame leg. That's a good. I one. always say the uh, the stone so in the unfortunately you, you can't take the stone in the shoe analogy where you would. Oh, I'm sorry. I always say the stone in the shoe analogy. Yeah. So if if you've got if you imagine the pain is where this this is the leg that the stone is in the shoe, you're not going to put your weight onto that. You're going to lift your weight off it because you want to have as little pressure through that stone. So that's the easiest way. So. In horses, we know generally when they're trotting, people go up, up, up as they're doing it. And so you can see which leg they're lifting off. Um, and that's that's what I do with dogs as well. So I'm often making a lot of noise while I'm uh, doing a lameness exam. <laughs> oh, see, see, I'm a down person because I go down, down, down when I see the, the, the sound leg yeah. hitting there. So there you go. It's the same thing. Yeah. Translated differently. Yeah. But, but it's important, and, that, and that's why it's important to pick that, because if you can pick that it is one leg, and which leg it is, and it's not more than one leg, you're kind of most of the way there. And this is where the video consult gives us a huge advantage, yeah. because we're really looking at movement. Yeah. And if we get a proper video film, then we can look at the one thing again and again and we can slow it down so we're not we're not standing in the rain hoping that we're going to see this 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 lameness we've got it but here's the trick so if we do a video consult the big mistake for a lame dog is to do the whole thing live okay that is a mistake the trick is for an interaction to occur before so almost like a pre-consult yeah so when the consult is booked the reception does a little receptionist a bit of job they get all the details <clears throat> they get the, the main problem and then they ask the owner to film the dog and load up the film and send it in yeah. and then you can we can look at the film before the consult and that means that people aren't trying to film while they're talking because again that doesn't work because yeah. if we're going to look at a lameness there's a certain thing that we want the dog to do and and I th we've got a link yeah. which kind of shows that because when we when we're looking at a dog walking what we're doing is what I like is I I, I see right I just want the dog relaxed so a loose lead no distractions, and then walk away from me and walk for about 20 steps on the dog and then walk directly back towards me. And that's the kind of main thing. And then I want to see it from the side. So I want to move around to the side yeah. and I want to see the dog walk past me to the left and walk back to the right. And if I'm very lucky, then you can see that that's the film that we need. That's yeah. exactly the film that we need. We don't want to see the dog running in a field and disappearing off the camera 
because uh, that's no use at all. And that's quite often what what people send without understanding. That I remember once I, I went to to London Zoo. <clears throat> um, they had a tiger. Um, oh, sorry, it was a lion, an Asian lion, Asian lioness, which they thought had uh, arthritis. So mm -hmm. I went down early in the morning. I think it's five o'clock in the morning before everyone came in, and we went to the enclosure. And the keepers, I said, they said, they said to me, what do you think? I said, well, I don't think anything till I see her move. Yeah. She's just lying there. <laughs> and and so they, they, then they went through this 15 minute thing where they tried to get this lioness to move. <laughs> and she just looked at them. She was way in the corner of a paddock. And they ended up jumping up on the bars. And, and suddenly she got up and ran right back into the lion house. And they said to me, what do you think? <laughs> I said, well, I don't know. That was too fast. So film her. So it's just, it's just kind of, you know, people think you spot this immediately, but you can't. It's a very measured type of uh, examination. And I think using a video, and especially a video done beforehand, which then can be sent into the practice that we can look at, then when we do the face-to-face video consult we've got that information yeah. and we can make much better use of the time the other good trick i've seen with this is the reception send out a list of questions which we're likely to ask during the, the consult related to the lameness so the owners can think about the answers yeah and it makes it much easier to use the time yeah and so that gets us very much much more quickly to the point and then you can use the video consult much better because then if i want to see the dog's leg so i know which leg it's lame on and i can ask the owner maybe to move the leg but there's another yeah. thing the owner's got to have the dog with them when they do the video consult yeah yeah definitely. not go looking around the house for it <laughs> yeah yeah it's um so, it's so, so these are these are the pluses and, and, and i and yeah, I mean, it's just going to say it's just it's a tricky, a tricky thing to do to talk to the vet over you, especially if you're using a mobile phone because you've not got a big surface area to look look at, speak to them, and then look at the dog. And so ha having these tips on how to prepare um, the videos in advance and have a, a plan already in place so the vet's already got an idea of what's going on is just so so useful. Um, Hannah, um, our wonderful Cam Hannah, has also um, popped up a, a a link for another guide on how to make the videos as well. So we've got loads of info there for, for everybody who might be thinking about going to the vet to do those telemed consults. Um, so do you think, I mean, I, I do, but what do you think about this as the future use with these um, lameness videos? I, I, th I think it, this is it. This is the future lameness consult because it takes away all that wasted time in yeah. the clinic because I mean, often with very with very subtle problems there may be things the owner sees and they're really worried about and if they can just capture them on yeah. a, a film it's so easy for us to upload these things and look at them and you know and sometimes these things can mean be not important at all but unless you see them it's you, you you can't actually say that and, and i think you know getting on to with, with arthritis the, the key thing is repetition it's repeating the assessment yeah. and i think that it makes it easier to do these follow-ups if people don't have to necessarily always come into the surgery we could actually do some of the follow-ups especially if things perhaps are going well um at a distance we are we we, we know what's happening and we've we've got a record of the movement each time with these little yeah. video clips which we've never be, had before absolutely i think you know it's so useful I, I to have that's that's going to be really important yeah and i think it's useful to have that isn't it because you've also then got this ongoing record um i Oh, I like to take videos and pictures of my patients, but often at the very first consult, I don't because 
the patient's in quite a lot of pain and the owner's worried about them so it doesn't always feel that appropriate to take the video at that time but then five, like three four weeks down the line when the dog's doing so much better I wish I had that before and after video um because you do kind of you you get used to what that dog's doing at that time and it's lovely to look back and see okay yeah he still might be a little bit lame but look how lame he was four weeks ago compared to now we've had loads of improvement like let's see what we can do from here so I think even just from a record of that patient it's really useful to have these videos I think that's absolutely right and you know you know one of my big 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 things is measurement because arthritis is a disease that gets better on its own you know it, it, well, that's not it, it it doesn't get better on its own it, it changes it can be yeah. very bad clinically at one point and very good uh a week later or a month later and i think what we need are these lifetime records to try and understand, you know, what what pattern a particular dog has so we know when it's time for us to intervene. And more yeah. importantly, we start to learn what the best interventions are without, yeah. you know, me thinking something or you thinking something or Hannah thinking something. We all have this evidence that we can look at and, and agree this thing really works. So this is what we should spend our time doing yeah definitely. and i think that you know that's going to be a huge advance and and that takes us from you know telemedicine video consult and digital capture of data so that yeah. we, we're not trying to memorize things ourselves we've got these records captured digitally because yeah. that's what computers can do they don't forget well they, no. they, they lose things but they don't forget <laughs> if, you, if you've got that data proper and that's going to make a yeah. big change for our arthritic dogs over time. Yeah, definitely. I mean, um, I'm just going to quickly read out uh, Lynn, who is one of our ambassadors. Um, she's a really good um, advocate for, for this because she was saying she had a video consult on Sunday morning. Uh, the vet could see Maya in her own home where she was relaxed and her limp was evident um, on the videos that she sent to them. She was referred to the hospital and her anxiety was um, so much that she gave nothing away, had no limp and no pain responses. And then as soon as they got home, she limped again. So, um, it and, and we see that a lot. Um, people think that their, their dog's being a fraud or just making them out to be a liar, um, but it's not. They're so inhibited by fear or excitement yeah. that they don't show those normal behaviors. Um, they just get distracted. Um, I think that's the, the nature of dogs in some ways because they're either so happy to see you, they forget that they're painful. And we have to remember that pain is perceived in the brain. And so although the, the leg itself is um, <clears throat> sore, you perceive it in your brain. So if you're so yeah. overcome by endorphins or whatever, you'll forget for those few minutes that actually you're that painful. Um, um, or the other way that they're so blooming frightened, yeah. they're too scared. <clears throat> Do anything and they won't show you any behaviors at all they'll just stand there in fear and let you do anything because they'd just rather get the whole thing over and done with um which is also not helpful because you can't then they're so stoic you can't read a lot from that so um so yeah i think this is a yep. an exciting area of medicine for us to have as an extra skill <clears throat> but you know and, and here's the other the next thing is there's all this potential, and we've, we've almost come across it by accident, but it's clear that pet owners really like it yeah. as an interaction. You know, it's clear that there are times where if they don't need to go to the clinic, they would prefer not to. It's going to be great for cats. Yeah. I think, you know, cats hate, most, a lot of cats just hate going to the vet. Yeah. It's going to be great for dogs to be very nervous um and as you said if we can control this properly and, and that's the thing we, it, it's easy to get carried away but we've got to make sure this is a consultation and yeah. and we're trying to get different bits of information it's not a a, a, a motion feature film of three hours of video yeah. so we've got to be very focused on what we want yeah and especially things the advantages here 
viewing behavioral problems in the dog's own environment. Mm. Viewing the environment itself without having to visit a home. You know, to see where these, I mean, Hannah, this is Hannah's big thing, but it could be extended so much if we could just have this record of the, the terrain the dog's living in, which a lot of us don't have when we're stuck in veterinary practices, which is so important. Yeah. So as you build this up and, you know, and, and giving the support, you know, for diet to make sure dogs are losing weight yeah. at a distance where everyone's comfortable with it efficiently without people having to necessarily keep on going backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards to the veterinary surgeon. And, and another thing that I, I see a lot of potential for dogs with arthritis, I think what we do in humans is we have group sessions so that we talk like this. Yeah. So we take a subject and, and dog people with dogs with a particular problem can all just log into the practice. And mm -hmm. rather than doing that, that conversation one-to-one -one with everyone, you can do it to a whole group and they can talk to one another. And that's kind of, that gives the support that people need to try yeah. and keep on moving forward with this. Yeah. I so think that's I, I think we've got lots, there's lots of potential if we can control it. Yeah, I mean, that's, I mean, obviously that's something we do um, on CAM all the time and we're in quite a unique position um, in that we have got Holly's Army, which is the owner support forum, um, which is a brilliant, just really lovely community of people who all have autistic pets who ask questions and we give them open honest answers and we try and give them as much evidence base as we can um, but to have that from your vet practice I think would be really really wonderful way to um, improve the relationship between owners and their vets and which is really important because they are part of the team who's trying to help look after your pet so I think it's really good really really important to have that good relationship but also just to have that um, community around you of other people who are also trying to support an arthritic pet which isn't easy it's hard work you're a carer you're a full-time carer for this very um this dog who probably was very active before and now isn't and your life has changed with them so um yeah i think that's a brilliant idea and i think the other thing is that using the media you know as you say the, the support the, the whole care team and the practice can be transported to the home. So the nurses, the physios, the whole team can interact much better by using Zoom or whatever we're using. We've learned all these skills in the past six months and how to communicate. And we can actually bring that together to the benefit of the pet that we're trying to treat, who's in the middle. And, and in fact, rather than in the past what's happened is it depends who it comes to you know if it comes to me it'll have a certain treatment if it goes to the physio if it goes to the hydro but but this is a way where we can actually start to work together and i know people yeah. have said that in the past well how do we do this well this is it you could just sit down and have little we video consults over cases without having yeah. to meet we just do it 15 minutes of the day which would just be wonderful yeah, in human medicine, they call it an MDT, a multidisciplinary team. And they have all of the, the specialists all sit down together yep. and work through cases together. And um, that is the, the ultimate goal, isn't it? Because we all would love to do that. I think most um, people are keen to work with other vet professionals who have a slightly different interest, but all on the same disease. Um, but it's time. So I think you're absolutely right. And also distance, you know, I'm talking to you. Um, yep we're in totally different areas of the country and um we're able to discuss things together and um it's much it's much nicer doing it face to face rather than over the phone as well um and having the the ability to share those videos yes. and other media so what a good idea yeah absolutely i think there's um, some really exciting potential future um benefits to to um using this media and having to all the vets are having to get very techie at the moment which we're not naturally i think a lot of us aren't really people who are that bothered about technology so um i've definitely learned a lot since starting with cat uh, and also with that's... covid but you know there's another problem because it's amazing how non-techie 
vets are and vet practices are because you know a good broadband a good computer the the, the ability to do this well almost having a, a little studio to do it from makes the best advantage we need to have a, a virtual consulting room and it's a, it's a slightly different way to look at the interaction it would be interesting to look i mean i think we're kind of if we review what we've said um there are limitations to this type of consultation telemedicine is here to stay i think it's it's really for us um as veterinary professionals and as pet owners to work out the best way that we can use it um, to solve these problems. And, and my feeling is yeah. that we've entered a completely new era of medicine, because I think that we can go on from here. We've almost broken through the barriers um, to see what the potential is. And I think f for us, for arthritic dogs, if we can, if we can interact with as many owners as possible, we help as many dogs and cats as possible. And one of the barriers to that up till now has been a the difficulty in getting to see us, and b the difficulty we have of interacting as a professional team to provide the best care package for an animal and learning off each other because we as vets have got a lot to learn from our other professionals and they, they've got something to learn from us as well yeah i think you know be the dream to have you know behaviorist involved and have um you, you physios and your hydrotherapists and you know the full team wouldn't it be brilliant and um, i work i run my own little pain clinic um and i have a vet physio who comes and um works with me um, called Sophie and she's brilliant and we work together um, on cases and there's there's nothing better we get such lovely results and it's really nice to have somebody else come we come from slightly different standpoints I'm more of the drugs and I do acupuncture and she does um, the physiotherapy the exercises and laser therapy but between us we sort of work things out and sometimes it's nice to have somebody else you say well I'm not sure I'm happy with this part and he's yeah I agree and having that interaction where you've got someone else just to bounce those ideas off because you you don't always know when you're on your own you kind of have to go with what your gut's feeling sometimes um, and they're not easy cases to manage arthritic patients because things change and like you said before it's not a it's not a static disease they have a disease and then we're going to put them on this one drug and that's that for the rest of its life it doesn't work like that unfortunately so um, yeah having having this as um another toolbox tool then great we've got something else we can use um and i think you raised a really good point about cats as well because they are i know we generally talk about dogs on cam but they are notoriously difficult to get a lameness exam on um can be quite difficult to handle when stressed um so we could gain a lot of information from what their behaviors are at home um with telemedicine And I think I think the other thing is, I mean, I mean, the the battle against arthritis is exactly that. It's a war, um, and we we know more now than we ever have before. We understand the disease better. We understand how the patient yeah. is reacting to the disease, disease better, but we yeah. know so little. You know, and that's the yeah. humbling thing. There's still so much to learn. And I think if we if we were working together as a community, we because it is a lifetime disease. And I've said this before, vets, yeah. we as vets like to cure things. We like things that we can see and we can make better, and that's it. Mm -hmm. But arthritis isn't like that. Arthritis is a lifetime challenge. And we've got to work with each other. And the pet owners are actually the key in this because they are the monitor. They are the people who yep. can see all the time what's going on. We can only help them, but we can only help them if we understand 
what the problem is. And I think the video consult, telemedicine, digital capabilities are going to improve that because you know, we're going into an area in humans of personal medicine. And that's going to be the way it is in animals as well, because every dog's different, you know, and, and they respond to different things. Something will work for something and won't work for other, but understanding that and, and being very, very sure of that, we've got to take a step back as well and say, right, what are the big things that work that we've got to keep on moving on? And what are the things that are just confusing things? And that's kind of part of the, the battle as well. That there's too much yeah. stuff in arthritis management. We, we've got to yeah. kind of focus on the things that really make a difference for the individual animals. I want to soapbox yeah, now. I think that's, yeah. no, <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> um, it's just a, it's a really complex disease, isn't it? And, um, you know, we're, like you said, we're just learning all the time and we're trying things out and we're finding things work and things don't work. And we then have to report that back to people. So um, that's not to say some of the newer things aren't going to work, but unfortunately you don't know it till you try it with a lot of things and um, and different dogs are different. So um, it's not easy. It's not like if we've, we haven't found the magic drug or the magic treatment or the magic surgery or whatever it is yet we're uh, we're still sort of having to learn as we go and we learn from every patient i'm sure you you feel the same yeah yeah and i think it's as a community as well the support people feel helpless sometimes that's what yeah. i feel when when i see animals and some of the animals don't are not as bad as you want to think they are some of the animals are much worse than you others think they are and that's always fascinating but some yeah. people just need some pet owners just need reassurance and confidence that they're doing the right yeah. thing rather than yeah. leaping all over the place doing this doing that changing this changing that it's kind of a slow steady fight and and, and sometimes it's just perseverance and patience that's important yeah. rather than magic yeah and yeah i think you're absolutely right there's nothing better than having the reassurance there and that's the one thing that telemedicine can do without stressing the pet out you can have a quick com um conversation with your vet and say well we tried we started this drug four weeks ago uh, i don't think it's made any difference let me send you some videos of him walking again let what else can we do what can we try now um, and go from there and it just makes those follow-up appointments a lot easier because you're not having to get that very sore dog into a car um, if things haven't changed sometimes it's important to go and see the vet physically if things have changed because we need to reassess them and feel the pet and all of that sort of stuff but um, I think yeah. the um, having this as an extra um, skill uh, I guess we can put it as a skill uh, it's definitely a skill for me as you found out tonight trying to work out technology um uh, it is great to have in our armory to help assess and, and manage these patients but i think i think you just caught the essence of it there Esme, because it's a balance i mean i think that we need to see these patients back in the clinic but it's always been difficult to see them enough times it's not practical to do that and i think where the telemedicine media may allow us to just keep in contact without having to have these you know, see see the, the, the animals in the clinic when we need to on, on yeah. a regular basis but in between times we still got that contact and that doesn't necessarily need to be the vet it's kind of the care team in the practice or just picking it up and just making sure everything's okay making sure the diet's still working making sure the exercises are still going on picking up any points before they become big problems and then when we do our proper physical assessments we're actually all everyone's in control rather than us finding something horrible that we should have picked yeah. up but we couldn't because we didn't have time I think, um, you know, I think the, the big thing I would like people to take away from today's chat is that um, 
obviously COVID has caused a lot of stress and um, a lot of negativity, but we've actually been quite lucky in that, although there's been, we can't say it's perfect doing telemedicine, um, but from a veterinary perspective in the future, I think we've found extra techniques that are gonna help us so much manage patients. Um, and it's nice to be able to take away something po positive from this. What, you know, it's been a pretty awful time for most people. So um, it is nice to be able to say, well, actually, we've got one good thing in vet medicine that we didn't have before. And actually, when we, the things you've gone through, you know, the, the options we have, there's more than one thing. We can use it in a lot of ways. So I think it's brilliant. Yeah, I, I think it's going to make a big difference to osteoarthritis management. I really do. I think we've got a huge opportunity with this. So I'm very pleased. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Um, I would like to thank everybody so much for their patience tonight. Um, I did warn at the beginning that uh, we had issues with the internet access. So I apologise that I disappeared for a little while and left poor Stuart here uh, wondering what was going on. Um, we really appreciate everybody joining in and um, we've had some some nice comments through which i will i will pass on to stuart um and um i hope that you've all taken something useful from tonight thank you very very much stuart for joining us and for giving us your time and expertise oh, as you, always pleasure. it's um we're very happy and, um really pleased to have you here so um so yeah good night everybody and uh, thank you again stuart thank you